everybody, it's Wutini from GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. Um, I wanted to start off this week by talking about GamerCon, and how it has smashed its Kickstarter goals. Um, by the time I even wrote the article for the site, and mentioned it in my podcast, uh, it had already reached its goal of $25,000, and they have added new bonuses for as much money as they can possibly raise. Um, they've already reached their goal for a gamer concert, um, and they are now, they've now broken the $50,000 window. They have doubled what they originally asked for. So they reached 50 grand, which means they're now having a special brunch for anyone who donated over $100. Um, and if they can get, I think it's 60 grand, um, they're going to have a special celebrity gamer con guest. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who they can get, because, I mean, they have until the end of March, or, <laughs> March, they have until the end of August to raise their money, so, um, they're already at 50 grand, and they're still going, so, um, we'll see what happens in the next, uh, couple of weeks, if they can get that extra 10 grand, and we'll see who they can get for a celebrity. Um, it's also interesting because, um, I wanted to mention, uh, the original, when I posted their Kickstarter video on our website, um, to bring gay gamer readers' attention to GamerCon and ask them to donate to the worthy cause, um, it created kind of a little battle going on in the comments on that article, um, where, uh, someone named Anne, um, we kept trying to argue that, uh, why do we need a gamer con? Wouldn't it be better to go to regular conventions and make our presence known and have panels and booths there to help combat the homophobia in the gaming industry and, and bring awareness to our existence and our purpose and whatever issues we wanted to raise um, instead of sequestering ourselves into our own convention for gay gamers? Um, and a couple of people were arguing with her, um, but I would also like to um, have my say, which I'm going to do here, instead of in the comments, because I don't want to get there. Um, I would just like to tell her, those aren't mutually exclusive. You know, there have always been gay panels at PAX. Um, and, and, and two years ago, there was a, a gay-themed panel at PAX East that I attended that was in a dinky tiny room. And then this past PAX East, there was uh, another gay-themed panel that was in a massive room, and that still filled up completely. That entire huge room, and I was so impressed. I was like, wow, this is a big-ass room, and it is full of people who want to hear about this topic. Um, and I just think that's great. Uh, last year at New York Comic Con, Geeks Out had a booth. Um, so, you know, we're out there, we're getting our message across, we're telling everyone we exist, we're bringing up the issues that we want addressed, um, but I also think that it would be a lot of fun to just have a gamer con where the gay gamers can just hang out and enjoy themselves and not worry about having to be worrying about the issues and stuff, and making a statement. The statement is the con. So we're just gonna have some fun. So, just because we have our own, we're not sequestering ourselves into the gamer con and then not bothering we're going to keep going to the other conventions, too. I don't understand what her issue is. And it's getting ugly, so I'm not even going to step into that minefield. It's not happening. Uh, I just post the articles. <laughs> um, although, I do occasionally comment on them, uh, such as with um, a recent article, I, I posted the uh, Style Savvy Trendsetters trailer. That's the trailer for the new... Uh, sequel to Style Savvy that's coming out for the 3DS this October, because um, I'm super excited about it, because um, I loved Style Savvy. And in fact, there was someone who wrote in the comments and said, this is great to know that it's coming here, I'm so going to get this, because I very much enjoyed the first one, and he, he says he's like a married guy who discovered Gay Gamer because he was looking for information on Style Savvy, and in I guess it was my original review that he saw, and he said, I like this website, because they're reviewing Style Savvy as though it was an actual game, um, you know, as opposed to the other sites, which kind of dismissed it, I guess, as a girl game. And he appreciates that our website 
you know, treats all the games equally. And I like to do that. I mean, granted, every reviewer is going to have their preferences. And if you give a copy of Style Savvy to a reviewer who tends to play only sports games and Call of Duty and Madden and whatnot, he's probably not going to give it a good review because he's probably not going to enjoy it that much. Um, but I've always been about the quirky games. The music games, the weird niche games, stuff like Style Savvy, the puzzle games, things that don't fit into the big blockbuster genres of first-person shooters and platformers and whatnots. So, I mean, I'm super excited for Style Savvy on the 3DS. Um, I was so excited that I actually went back and pulled out my, dug out my old cartridge and plugged it in to my 3DS just to see if my shop was still doing. And it was. And, you know, I'd forgotten how much fun it was to play dress up with the customers that come in. And um, I'm looking forward to the new sequel, because you also get to dress boys this time, which is very exciting. Um, and, and maybe you'll get to have a romance this time, because the romance in the first game was very platonic, and there was a cute guy that was like, he lived in a mansion, he was this wealthy guy who lived in a mansion, he's all like, oh, I'll help you with your shop, and oh, I can't get involved, and you're like, wait, what? So, like, the game kind of was like, teasing you with a romance that it never followed through on, so I'm like, alright. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for Style Savvy, and I'm super excited that people, you know, even married guys come to Gay Gamer because they know that <laughs> we, we will have unbiased reviews of these kinds of games. Um, and sure enough, in October, I will, make, I will definitely be posting a review of Style Savvy Trendsetters to let everybody know what I think of it, which will probably be that I love it and can't stop playing it. Because that was the thing, I started playing Style Savvy and I was like, ooh, this is fun. And then like Tales of the Abyss was like, hey, remember me, you're still trying to finish me. And I'm like, I'm oh, just a minute, I gotta finish dressing this, she wants that blouse. And, uh, and then the problem was that before I went back to Tales of the Abyss, I took a detour into uh, theater rhythm again because um, I'd gotten some street passes over the past couple of weeks, and I wanted to download those street pass cards uh, into my theater rhythm game. Uh, and then I started playing some of their dark notes that I'd collected from these people. And then I'm like, oh, well, let me just get a few more theater rhythm points so that I can get some more... Let me just get some more points, some rhythmia, so that I can get some more stuff unlocked, and maybe I can finally unlock a character. Of course, I never unlocked a character. I kept unlocking more songs in the music player, which I don't care about. I want to play them, and I want to just listen to them. But then I did unlock one that I could play, and I was very excited about that. But I still have not unlocked a character. It's ridiculous. Um, and then I finally was like, alright, alright, enough. I have to go back and play some Tales of Best. Also, I'm so glad that I pre-ordered Theater Rhythm and got that big stylus, because at one, one day, when I was decided I wanted to play theater rhythm, I didn't have the stylus with me on the train, and I was trying to play it with a regular stylus, and it was so uncomfortable. It was horrible. <laughs> so, um, if you don't have a big stylus, theater rhythm is going to suck, just FYI. Um, and there's all these awesome games coming out in October, and I just realized that I still haven't played Rhythm Thief, and I don't know when I'm going to get around to that one. I'll have to save Rhythm Thief for the next time there's, like, a lull and there's nothing really coming out, um, which, I don't know, there's stuff coming out in October and November, so I'm going to be good till Christmas, so maybe maybe that January, February lull, I'll be able to go pick it up, and then maybe I can get it used or cheap on sale somewhere, so that'll be good. Um, so, please go to Kickstarter and uh, donate to GamerCon and help make it happen, and uh, I hope to see you there, because I have every intention of going. Uh, somehow, even if I have to just start walking. And, uh, I will see you right here on my living room couch next week. Bye.